Right, what I'd like to do today, we've got trigonometry, which is going to start quite easy and then it's going to sort of get quite hard. So st stay with me is what I'm saying. If you think, oh, this is easy, it, it, it doesn't stay that way. So let's start with a whiteboard and just go over the basics. If I can find my mouse, where's my mouse gone? Come on, mouse, there it is. Um, so if I get a whiteboard, have you noticed that what Microsoft halfway through the, the term have changed the whiteboard? Thanks. That's really helpful. So all the things that we had before don't work anymore. So we've got a triangle which has got capital A, capital B, capital C, which are the angles. We've got A, B and C, which are the sides, lowercase a, lowercase b, lowercase c are the sides. OK, if you have three, three out of the six, you can find the other um, the other three. So if you've got an angle and two sides, you can find everything else. If you've got three sides, you can find everything else. If you've got three angles, um, you can find the shape of the triangle, but probably not a side. No, you need a side. If you if you need to find sides, you've got to have at least one side. So first of all, we've got the sine rule, which is a over sine sine a is equal to b over sine b which is equal to C over sine C, which is a nice, easy to remember rule, um, except you've got to be a little bit careful because angle theta, the sine of theta is equal to the sine of pi, uh, pi minus theta. So if you've got an obtuse angle triangle, calculating the angle might give you a problem. So for a sanity check, I would always use either the sine or the cosine rule to um, calculate the angles and then add them together to make sure that they come to pi if you're using radians or um, 180 if you're using um, degrees. OK, so oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to move that up. So um, that's the sine rule. And then the cosine rule says that um, um, a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. OK, so we've got the sine rule there and we've got the cosine rule that, which is there. Both of which I'm sure you've done a long time ago at school, so there's no shocks there for you. Um, so let me just chuck you straight in with a problem. There's a a mouse um, and if I just throw that up there um, if I give you a triangle if I say that a is equal to 4 b is equal to 5 and c is equal to 7 can you find the angles OK, can I give you a couple of seconds to do that using the sine and the cosine rule? OK, well, I'm going to start by using um, the cosine rule here. So what we've got is A is 4, B is 5 and C is 7. So what I'm going to do is to take the cosine rule and say that cos A. Now, let's do it, write it all out. So A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. Now we've got the three sides, which is A, B and C. So the thing that we don't know is capital A. So let's put the 2BC cos A onto the left hand side. So we can say 2BC cos A is equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared. OK, and then let's move that up an inch. 4, 5 and 7. So then what I'm going to have is that I'm going to divide both sides by 2BC. So um, cos A is equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared divided by 2BC. So um, A is equal to cos to the minus 1 brackets b squared plus c squared minus a squared divided by 2bc. OK, and only now is it worth putting any numbers into your calculator. So I'm going to do this on a calculator. 
yes, I agree with 34 as well. So, um, okay, right. So what we've got is A is equal to 34.0405, isn't it, actually? So if I delete that, 05, so it's 0477. So I'm going to write 34.04, but if you're using a calculator, stick it into memory. And if you don't know how to use your memories, find out. If you go into an exam without knowing how your calculator works, you are mad, frankly. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, a version of this to find the angles B and C. Are these formulas going to be given? Yes, they are, Philip. They'll, they'll be on the, uh, the, the crib sheet. I'll share the crib sheet with you in a couple of weeks um, because it, 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 just so you know what's going to be on the you know, part of your exam. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is to find angle B. So I can probably, or you can probably see that B is going to equal to the arc cos of, and what we're going to do is effectively use the same equation, except we're going to swap B and A around, aren't we? So it's going to be A squared plus C squared minus B squared, Okay, so anywhere there was an A, we put a B, and every anywhere there was a B, we put an A, so that's going to be over to AC. Okay, so that's going to give us B, so if you'd like to quickly calculate that, and then I'm going to have C is equal to cos to the minus 1 of A squared plus B squared minus C squared over to a b and that's going to equal and that's going to equal okay any answers coming 44.42 i agree with that yep but again stick it into your calculator's memory that's the calculator i'm using and so to put it into memory you go shift store and then you've got memories A, B, C, D, E, and F. So you've got six memories on these calculators. I'll say more about calculators later. Um, A, because you need to know which ones you can use on your exam, and B, you need to know that they lie to you. Okay, so 44.42, I agree with that. So 44.42. And just whilst we're here, um, we, we derive this equation, capital A is equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. So to find B, all I've done is I've swapped the B's and the A's around. And here in this equation, I've swapped the um, C and the A's around to find um, angle C. So has anybody got angle C yet? Yes, 101.54, yep. 5.4 Philip, careful. <laughs> it's 5.37 5, isn't it? So it'll round up to 5.4 and just so you know baseline will mark that wrong because it's wrong. <laughs> okay so that's there we go um, 101.54. Now if you've stored this in your calculator you can now do, so I've stored these answers, uh, calculator, if I can see myself. I, um, I've got memories, I don't know if you can see that, A, B, C, D, E, and F across there. So I've got those numbers in memory. So I can now do recall A plus, recall B plus, recall C plus, and I get the answer equal to 180 degrees, which is my sanity check. Okay, so we've now taken a triangle. We've calculated all the angles and we've done a sanity check and, and everything checks out. OK, so that's the sine rule and the cosine rule. And they all work pretty straightforward, I would say. Um, now, I'd like to take those a little bit further. Um, so the next thing I want to do is to take a triangle. Where's my, yeah, there we go. So start with some axes and let's have a triangle that looks like that obviously this is x and this is y and this is my angle theta and i'm going to call the hypotenuse a distance r okay so this point here 
we can define it as x comma y, right? And that's its Cartesian um, coordinates after Descartes, René Descartes, who was a French mathematician and philosopher. But there's another way of defining it, which is to say the angle and the radius. So you can imagine, um, you know, the sort of um, radar pictures that you get on, on some films, if, if you've never seen a, a radar. You can't hear anything. Can anybody else hear anything? Is, is the sound Yeah, there? I can hear you, Tom. Yeah, okay. hear you. All right, listen, Zishan, I'm going to keep going. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to keep going, Zishan, because this is being recorded and you'll be able to see the recording later. OK, so we've got X and Y, so I can come along to here on the X. I can go up there on the Y and that gives me that coordinate there. And this was originally set up by Descartes. I understand I wasn't there at the time. You under, you, you get it. Um, but another way of doing it is to have a distance R. So R would have started down here. Let's change my pen color. Let's have this multicolor pen. It would R would have started down here. And then if I rotate that anti-clockwise, on a circle like that, you can see that the same point can be identified by R, the radius, and theta, the angle. The angle is always measured anti-clockwise from the x-axis. That's, that's how you measure um, polar angles. So then we can say that x, y can also be represented by R theta, which is called the polar coordinates. So what I'd like to do is just to see quickly how we can convert from one to the other, because that's going to be quite important for us. Come on, mouse, where are you? There you are. That's going to be quite important for later on. So what we've got here is we've got, um, this is the x distance here, but we've also, if you remember, we've got cosine along the, what I call the central direction, and we've got sine along the sideways direction. That's, that's the terminology I use. You use whatever you're used to. So we can say that x is equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sine theta. OK, so if I've got um, Cartesian coordinates, x and y, I can easily no, if I've got polar coordinates, r and theta, I can easily calculate the, um, the Cartesian ones. But let's have a look at the other way of doing it. We've got r is equal to, uh, let, let's start with r squared, is equal to x squared plus y squared. OK, that's just Pythagoras. x is here. x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So let's just change that a bit. That's what I wanted. So r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. OK, and then the final thing I want, um, I don't want to use r to calculate theta because obviously I've got the opportunity of making a mistake with that. So what I'm going to say is that theta is equal to, let's just look at this, we've got sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. OK, so the tan of theta is equal to the y value over the x value. So theta is equal to tan to the minus 1 of the y value, which is y, obviously, over the x value. OK, so if you've got Cartesian coordinates, that's to say x and y, you can use these two equations to calculate r and theta. Equally, if you've got r and theta, the polar coordinates, you can use these two equations to calculate x and y. OK, so we can easily flip between the two and the, um, the coordinates obviously end up giving you the same point on the, uh, on the plane. Yeah, OK, why do I use tan to the minus 1? OK, let me just go over that. So let me just push this up a little bit. So what I've got is tan theta is equal to y over x. So change my pen color. Here's theta. Um, here is y and here is x. OK, so tan theta is equal to y over x, but I don't want tan theta. I want theta. So what I want to do here is I want to take the tan to the minus one, which is the inverse process 
and that's going to give me tan, so I need to put a tan to the minus 1 in there as well, to the minus 1. So that means that I can now write theta is equal to tan to the minus 1 of x over y. So tan is the, the function, and tan to the minus 1 is the inverse function. Is that OK? Is everybody happy with that? See where that comes from? And if you look at your calculator, um, tan is uh, on the, the, the main function of the button, and tan to the minus 1 is the shifted function of the button. So let's try an example of that. Cartesian coordinates. So if I've got um, x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 12, can you convert that into r and theta? I'll give you a couple of minutes to have a try at that. And as I'm doing it, I'll give you a little sketch. OK, so before I start doing this, I'm going to look at that triangle, which is 5 there, 5 in the x direction and 12 in the y direction, which says to me, I'm going to draw these so it looks better on the video. So it's 5 in the x direction and 12 in the y direction, which means that that angle is going to be a bit bigger than 60, I would say. It's, I mean, if, if this was 5 in the x and 5 in the y, then the angle would be 45 degrees, wouldn't it? Or pi over 4 if you're in radians. Um, but as this is 5 in the x and 12 in the y, that's nearly double. So it's going to be slightly bigger than 60, I would guess. And then r, I mean, I know what r is, because this is a standard triangle, the 5, 12, 13 triangle. But you, you're obviously going to get a value that is slightly bigger than 12, um, whatever it turns out to be. So before we do any calculations, we know that we're expecting theta to be slightly uh, slightly more than 60 degrees, and we're expecting r to be slightly more than 12. So r is equal to the square root of um, 5 squared plus 12 squared which if you do that, you'll find that's a, the square root of 169, which means that that is equal to 13. OK, and then, yeah, and then theta, theta is going to equal 10 to the minus 1 of the y value, which is 12, divided by the x value, which is 5. OK, and that is going to equal... Out comes the calculator. Um, arc tan of 12 divide 5 equals, and I'm still in radians, so times, so that's equal to, in my case, 1.176 radians, which is going to equal. 67.38 degrees. Any questions on that? Or is that so stunningly obvious? I'm assuming that's stunningly obvious. OK, so one more thing that I'd like to do is um, let's imagine that r is equal to 12 and theta, I'll stay in degrees for now, is equal to 139 degrees, OK? So can you find x and y for me? Is it an angle of 139 degrees? So let's just think about this. This We measure that direction from the x-axis. So 90 degrees is going to be that vertical line there. 180 degrees is going to be... Um, the negative x-axis, so 125 would be about there, so 139 is going to be something like that. OK, so before we start, we know that the x-value is going to be around minus, a bit bigger than half, I'd have thought, so that's 
not minus six, but a, a bit bigger than minus six. And the y value is going to be, um, again, six-ish, but it's going to be plus six. So we're expecting sort of minus six plus six, something of that order. But if you put the numbers in, so you're going to have 12 times cos 139. Do we, does anybody have an answer for that? Just out of interest. Okay, minus 906. I'll agree with that. Okay. And what are the units of x and y? This is a Becky question. I hope you get that. She's listening at the moment, Tom. <laughs> right. I see. Yeah, so what did we say? That was equal to minus 9.06. Okay, um, and Robin, you think there are no units. Okay, yeah, and you do need the minus. So I'm not going to agree with no units. I've not mentioned units so far, but what kind of thing is this value? It's a distance, yeah, okay. so. So therefore, it's going to be a unit of length. So I'm going to put an L there just to say it's a unit of length. I've not said whether it's miles, light years, millimetres, um, angstrom units. I've not said what it is, but whatever it is, it's a unit of length. OK, and then Y is going to equal 12 times sine, sine brackets 139. Anybody got a value for that? Yep, great, thank you. 7.87. Okay, there we go. And again, the units of that are going to be length. All right, so um, let's just so we've got minus nine there, and I was saying it's a bit bigger than minus six, so that's okay. We've got plus 7.78, so that's nearly eight, and we reckon that that was going to be a bit bigger than plus six. So I'm comfortable that my, my answers on those are correct. Okay. No arctan here. No, we're not using arctan on this one because we're converting from polar to Cartesian. You need the arctan when you're going from Cartesian to polar. That's the way around. It works. OK, I, I think that's sort of everything that I want to do in terms of the nuts and bolts here. So I think this is the time to go into breakout rooms. After the breakout, um, what I'd like to look at is I'd like to look at calculators in a bit of detail because they don't always tell you the truth. And I'd like to go over that with you. I'd also like to share with you how you use the, the stores on them, the memory locations, and also converting from degrees to radians and, and back again to, so you know what your calculator is doing. Um, because you you need to know how your calculator works before you get to an exam. Learning in the exam is not a good idea. OK, so we're going to go into breakout rooms now.